Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics. I'm Taylor Phillips, and welcome to Taylor's Detroit Sports on Spreaker. You can also find this and all other episodes of Taylor's Detroit Sports on iHeartRadio. If you have any opinions on everything that's going on in the Detroit sports world, call in or send a text message live on the show at 231-429-3668. That's 231-429-3668. Also, you can add me on Facebook as Taylor Phillips, online at facebook.com slash phil1dt. Like my Facebook page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports page. Join my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group, and follow me on Twitter at dt2phillips. And this is episode number 101. I'm Taylor Phillips. I want to... All I'm going to do for this episode is recap the Lions and Patriots and give full analysis. Patriots grill the Lions 34-9 in New England. First, I want to share my broadcast with you guys before I uh, get get started on the on the topic at hand. shared it on LinkedIn, now i got it shared on Pinterest. Let me see here. There we go. There I am. Now i just got to share on Google and in my Facebook Detroit sports groups here. My Detroit Sports Group, and the Detroit, the Detroit Sports Group, run by Austin Young. Okay, now we're good. All right. Um, again, like I just mentioned, the Lions lost badly to the Patriots, thirty-four to nine. Jim Caldwell spoke at his press conference, a uh, post-game press conference, and. He said there was no sugar coating in it. Although Matthew Prater appeared to 
finished three and three. That's the only bright spot I've got. I maybe I've got a got a second. Golden Tate. Had a bit of a had a bit of another game. Made, made at least a few catches. But uh, Calvin Johnson was dropping the ball. And I'd like to thank everybody for listening. One of my friends, Jennifer Marie, liked my post in in my Facebook group, Taylor Phillips' Detroit Sports Group. Thank you, Jennifer Marie. And if you have any opinions on, on the Lions' loss to the Patriots, you, you can comment on my posts on Facebook and Twitter and Google and all my other social networking sites, Tumblr, Pinterest, LinkedIn, uh, Google Plus. Um, and with that loss and a Packers 21-13 win over the, the lowly Minnesota Vikings the Packers now take over first place in the NFC North, and the Lions now fall to second place in that division, and that's not good. But uh, let me go out and let me go ahead and play the blame game myself here. Most of this usually has to do with Stafford, but but there were uh, eight drops, as far as I can tell, by by not only Calvin but altogether. Uh, Joy Bell. Had a, a, still did not score a touchdown. They only got three field goals. Matt Prater appeared to be three for three, uh, like I mentioned before. Matthew Stafford finished a flat 18 of 46 passing for 264 yards, zero touchdowns, and one interception. His 49.5 rating was his worst of the season. For Tom Brady of the New England Patriots, he's the man. He completed 38 of 53 for 349 and two touchdowns and one interception by James Ahinabo. That, that, there's another there's another bright spot. Let's see the Fox Sports Detroit girls just uh updated their profile picture. Lovely ladies that support all Detroit teams. They do support Michigan State and not Michigan because they're MSU graduates. That's okay, they got both teams covered. Jeff Lyle liked my activity, which is... Uh, Um, commenting on on my watching of Jim Caldwell's press conference, and which 
in which he was absolutely right on everything he said. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to play you the, the press conference right now. Going to Mike O'Hara's uh, column here. times I obviously that we stand up still up here in front of you and didn't have uh, at least some bright spots uh, to talk about and didn't have many in this game um, didn't play well uh, you know in terms of our kicking game overall defense and also obviously offense as well we sputtered uh, we're not as sharp as we're capable of being and um, that's a good football team uh, they play extremely well uh, they don't give you much uh, they don't make many mistakes and uh, you know, we just um, just were not uh, sharp today. Even in our kicking game, we had a couple of obviously long returns uh, that certainly um, hurt us as well. So, um, you know, what we got to do is, uh, you know, a short week, and uh, sometimes a short week is needed. And I think this is one where we needed to kind of get this one behind us and and move ahead. So we'll give them a chance to sulk and lick their wounds a little bit, and then we got to go back to work. So, open up for any questions. How do you explain? Um, you know, sometimes you, you, know, you until we get a look at the film and see all of the details involved, but I can tell you right now, we didn't play well. I mean, you don't play well, that's what happens. We didn't play well defensively at the start. Um, we didn't play well offensively. Um, we had our shots, didn't come up with a couple of plays we had an opportunity to make. You know, we were kicking field goals, like I mentioned in there, scoring touchdowns. It, it, you know, going to make it a tough night. How alarming is it at this point, considering what you guys did? I didn't hear your beginning. How Uh, no alarm. I mean, you know, obviously we're disappointed in the way we played all the way across the board. Not just offense. I'm talking about defense. I'm talking about in the kicking game, uh, all the way across the board. We got to go back to work and, and get it rolling. And uh, you know, it's just one of those games. You just just didn't play well. You didn't phase. How do you how do you explain those? Um, well, you know, one of the things that you'll see on offense is that, um, you know, I, I think there were times we moved the ball pretty well, and we had opportunities to make ball, catch balls in the end zone. Uh, didn't, didn't make plays. You, know, you don't make plays, and obviously it looks as if you're inept in that regard. So, um, you know, we just, um, you know, we were in position, I think, to, to make some of those, but um, just didn't come up with them. When you talk about, you talk about the offense, I have a, you talk about quarterbacks, receivers, drop balls, blocking. I didn't say drop balls. I said make plays, right? So I mean, make plays. Uh, you know, obviously, I think that happened. Uh, you know, a couple, a couple of areas. We had a chance for interception on the other side. You know, maybe a play here, play there. Uh, missed some tackles that could have stopped them, right? Penalties. I think we had a series of, of penalties on the first two drives defensively that kind of gave them some momentum. I mean, I think we might have had four or five penalties during that stretch where I think we had maybe one in the first half. So you know, things like that. We're just out of sync. Just didn't function well. Yeah, well, that's your opinion on that. Until we get a chance to look at the film and see exactly what happened, um, you know, there could have been a couple of miscues. And I know there were a couple of miscues there. So, yeah, you know, I you know, that's the big thing. I think everybody wants to focus on the quarterback, and it's not all his issues. Would you do it? How would you evaluate the offense, Jim, when you don't score a touchdown? Absolutely. And, and, and I think, and I, think I, re I said that, that you know, I'm, we're not functioning extremely well on offense. Disappointed in how we're playing. So what do you uh, think I, has to change between now and the next couple of um, offensively? You know, we'll take a look at it, and we'll see. You know, we'll see exactly what happens. I think in this particular ball game, it gets skewed a little bit because we did have an opportunity to make some plays. If we make those plays, we have a little bit different conversation. It's a little bit different game, so uh, we got to figure out a way to get those done. So everybody has struggled to score against you. Packers scored seven points. Are the Patriots that good offensively? Well, it's a good football team. You know, obviously that's what I meant when I said that usually there's a bright spot we can talk about, at least when we come into the room. Um, weren't able to do so today. Uh, they were able to move the ball. Um, you know, score touchdowns on us, uh, you know, and um, got a little settled down there for a while right after the half, but um, but they still were, were certainly able to, to handle us pretty well. So they're, they're, they're they're last week run the way they did against the Colts, and then they throw 50 sometimes today, just mm -hmm. from a coaching standpoint. I think that has to be impressive. 
Well, they, I mean, they, that's a good football team. I mean, they do everything, you know, well. I mean, they're a team that can run the ball. Um, you know, they're a team that throws it extremely well. And, uh, I mean, I think, you, you, you know, you can see they can sort of do it a number of different ways. So, uh, you know, you have to be operate on all cylinders, which we weren't today, uh, in order to beat a team like that. Knowing what their offense is capable of and how it's rolling, why were you so conservative in the first half, hunting on a fourth and three in New England territory and kicking that 40, or, uh, 53 yards? Uh, you have to take each situation, you know, the way it bears out. You're early on in the game, you know, have, you know, go for it on fourth down. That situation they put us. I think we were what was it seven six or seven seven nothing at that time or something. I mean, you, you got to take the points, uh, you know, in that situation. You can, you know, I think that's a non-story. Uh, second half, obviously, um, we ended up going for it a couple of times. One time we kicked the field because we were fourth and fourteen, and you know, I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, and uh, and then the other times we felt we better go for it because of the fact we're running out of time possessions you may not get it back you know so that, that's kind of how those things play out so conservative i wouldn't say that 15 i understand that you know, we we're also didn't but did you see what happened subsequently the clock ran down time of possession opportunities to get it back you know you have to kind of take that gamble um, so that's kind of the way we look at it you might be able to judge it differently that's the way we saw it yes jim Sure, there's drastic changes. I'm not one of those that'll make rash decisions right after a game when everybody's disappointed. Um, yeah, sometimes you'll make some huge mistakes that way. We'll, yeah, we'll take a look at it and um, see where we are. We'll take a look at it on the way back on the plane. And by the time we land, we'll, we'll have a, a, some direction and focus on what we want to get done for this week. Reef, a couple more for Coach. Reef has been such a mainstay for you guys the past couple of years on the offensive line. Uh, how difficult was it accounting for his absence uh, for most of this game? Do you have an, uh, an update on his status? Yeah, um, you know, obviously he's um, you know been a been a workman, and just in terms of always being out there for us, and uh, I don't have an update on his status, um, but we will in a couple of days or so. But uh, but nevertheless, you know, I think the young fella got in there and you know held his own. He had a couple of tough spots, but uh, but other than that, I thought he was he was okay. Jim Caldwell, pausing right there. Jim Caldwell was talking about the Riley Reef injury. Let me go into that real quick. He injured his knee. series of the game. Um, Riley Rick Reef uh, went into the locker room with a light wrap covering the covering the knee, and that will likely put his 29-game start streak at left tackle in jeopardy. Had a heck of a run, though. He played 1,102 a, a of a possible 133 of a possible 1,133 offensive snaps last year, and all 679 snaps in the first 10 games of the season. He was Detroit's top offensive lineman with Warford already out with a knee issue. I just have to hope they, hope they God they heal up soon. Sooner than expected. But anyway, Back to the Caldwell press co press conference. Ah. 
Yeah, that was just, um, you know, just a little bit of uh, a couple of times in there. We just got a little just out of whack uh, is probably the best way to explain it. Um, just in a couple of those uh, coverage situations. And in uh, one in particular, uh, probably the one that was obvious, there was nobody around him. Uh, and, and, you know, that's not normal. You said uh, you have to look at the film, but, I mean, just from watching it today, what did you think about Stafford for one? Um, you know, I'll have to take, take a look and see. I, I think it's hard to judge. Um, nobody played extremely well on our team. I mean, I'm just talking about everybody. There's not anybody I can tell you that, hey, this guy played really well. So we'll take a look at the film and see. You said earlier, you said earlier this week that you wouldn't make any change with Joe. By the way, uh, may I make a correction? Matt Prater went three for four because he missed a 53-yard field goal attempt. in the same game today. So, he wasn't three for three, he was three for four. <laughs> so, my mistake. You're already calling the plays, but is that even a possibility at this point after you sit down, after you watch it, or is that still not possible? No. Can you talk about, um, you went at Revis a lot, not with a lot of success. There okay, I take it. But uh, okay. obviously Revis is a great player. Can you talk about what you saw in your plan going at Revis? To yeah, well, you know, we, there's not um, you know, there's not a whole lot of people we shy away from, to be honest with you. We have players that can play on our side of the ball as well. Um, and, you know, whether it's covering Calvin or whether he's covering Golden, I mean, we still got to gotta go at it. Uh, we know he's a fine player, you know, outstanding talent, but uh, we think we, our players are fine players as well. You guys are very One more for Coach. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about big picture, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I'm worried about our next game, and uh, we'll deal with the big picture later on. We can, you know, get out there and play. We'll add them up at the end. What do you think this says about your team now? You had a game last week against the top team in the NFC, top team in the AFC this week. How do you feel like your team is ready for the big stage? Uh, what does it say about our team? That we're 7-4. No. That's all it says, right? Let's talk about That's all it says. Plain and simple. Else. Sorry about uh, that. And uh, we just got to get better. Not Jim Caldwell. <laughs> Uh, what does it say about our team? That we're seven and four. That's all it says, right? That's all it says. Plain and simple. Uh, and uh, we just got to get better. Absolutely. We do have to get better. Also, Dominic Rayola's late cut block draw, drawing ire of the New England Patriots. Waiting, waiting for that to load while I, while I wait, I can, I can share this article from endlive.com of Riley Reef's knee injury. dropping balls. Corey Fuller also dropped one. Jeremy Ross. I mean, Eric Ebron is just a rookie, but 
I don't think he's I don't think he's prog progressing at all thus far this year, and that's a problem for the Lions. They really need to shape up Eric Ebron before the season's over. Then they'll see what they can do with, do with them at the end of the seat in the offseason. But anyway, the late cut block by, by Rayola. That was a GIF about this. When Stafford took a knee on the final play of the, of the ball game, first and 25, Lions from their own 31, Rayola lunged at the knees, written by Justin Rogers of MLive.com. Dominic Rayola lunged at the knees of Patriots rookie defensive lineman Zach Moore. It's from... This is a, a 15 second... This is actually a 3 second... Vine GIF. That was very undisciplined. Dominic Rayola has got to be frustrated. But, but to do something like that uh, is uncalled for, and that's not discipline. Jim Caldwell must not have been happy with that, with that either. Just a laundry list of things going, going wrong for the Lions today in New England, in Foxborough, Massachusetts at Gillette Stadium. New England defensive tackle Vince Wilfork quoted, I just heard what happened, but that was stupid. I didn't see it, but, but from what I heard, you're taking a knee. They'd get mad if we were just to blow up one of their players, so I mean, it's just uncalled for. And they'll unquote. Yeah, Vince Wilfork is right. That's just dumb football. To, get, to give a cheap sh shot to one of your opponents. You know, in any case, way, shape, or form is uncalled for. The NFL has had multiple issues with players going too hard on kneel down plays. Last season, former Tampa Bay Bucks coach Greg Shano came under fire for telling his players to rush the passer while the opponent was in the was in the victory formation. And just two weeks ago, Pittsburgh Steelers safety Mike Mitchell leaped over the line of scrimmage as New York Jets quarterback Michael Vick took a knee. Will Fork conceded it's on every player to be alert until the clock hits, z hits all zeros. He, s he said, quote, at the same time, you always have to protect yourself. You always have to play with your neck on a swivel and be alert for 60 minutes. It came down to it, to it today on a bonehead play like that, but luckily no one got hurt and we can move on. Unquote. But again, thank goodness for Jim Caldwell. He, he is such an a disciplined head coach for the Lions. And he's not that stupid either, Jeff Moss. Sorry to disagree with you, but... We all make mistakes, but Caldwell's a smart man.
Oh, I'm gonna go to NFL.com real quick and see the Week 13 schedule. Lions play the awful Chicago Bears. Yeah. NFL.com is still slowly but surely loading here. I was looking, looking for the for the Packers' next opponent. The Packers lead the NFC North by a game over the Lions. Packers are home against the Patriots at 4:25 p.m. on CBS at Lambeau Field next Sunday. And of course, the Lions. Uh, Play the five and six Chicago Bears on Thanksgiving Thursday at 12:30 p.m. Eastern on CBS and the Detroit Lions Radio Network with Dan Miller and Jim Brandstetter and Tony or and Tony Ortiz. That's on their flagship station, 97 won the ticket in Southfield in the in the Greater Detroit area. Link on my share this link on my sports page on my Detroit sports page Taylor Phillips's Detroit sports page and then I'm gonna tweet it I'm also gonna Google plus it Entire NFL standings here. Right now, the Cowboys. Right now, the New York Giants lead the Cowboys 21 to 17. The Cowboys just scored a touchdown. We have and and the game and that game is 5:51 left in its third quarter.
Patriots improved the nine and two. They lead. They they unanimously unanimous unanimously lead the AFC East. The Dolphins are six and five. The Buffalo Bills are five and five. They play at Ford Field against the New York Jets, who are two and eight. Tomorrow night on Monday Night Football at 8:30 on ESPN with Mike Tirico and John Gruden. Of course, Jim Schwartz, uh, the former former Lions head coach, who will take one more shot at Lions fans who will wear green. Yeah, it's about time I mentioned that. Oh man. Schwartz is such a goofball. Yeah, I said goofball because I want to keep it clean. Uh, looking at looking at a, at other NFL scores. Uh, oh, by the way, make a correction here. There are two Monday night games. The Jets Bills game is at seven o'clock at Ford Field, and the there's also a game at eight thirty between the Baltimore Ravens and the North and the New Orleans Saints. Uh, other finals, other finals from today: the Oakland Raiders edge the Kansas City Chiefs twenty-four to twenty. Huge upset. The Raiders are not will not be zero sixteen. The Cleveland Browns edge the Atlanta Falcons 26-24. Chicago Bears, the Lions' next opponent. The Bears uh, beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Super Bowl, in one of the Super Bowl matchups, 21-13. The Buccaneers are, are uh, a lot worse than the Bears are, but the Lions will will beat the Bears somehow. And, but as Jim Caldwell said, the Lions have to get better. The Bengal, the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Houston Texans 22-13. The, Indiana, the Indianapolis Colts grounded the Jacksonville Jaguars 23-3. The Packers, as I mentioned before, beating the Minnesota Vikings In Minneapolis, 24 to 21. Green Bay now now has first place. Now leads the NFC North by one game over our, our beloved Lions. The Philadelphia Eagles doubled up the just about doubled up the Tennessee Tennessee Titans, 44 43 24. The San Diego Chargers nipped the St. Louis Rams, 27 24. The Seattle Seahawks flattened the Arizona Cardinals 19 to three. The Denver Broncos bested the Miami Dolphins in a in a scoring contest 39 to 36 at Mile High Stadium in Colorado. The San Francisco 49ers. At, at home, took care of the Washington Redskins 17 to 13. That's it. That concludes the final scores of Week 12. Thus far, 4:20 left in the third quarter in the Meadowlands. The Giants still lead, still have the ball in lead, 21 to 17. You can catch that on NBC Sunday Night Football with Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth. Patriots lead the AFC East, like I mentioned before. Like I mentioned before, nine and two with a nine and two record. The Cincinnati Bengals have a very slight edge at seven and three and one over the Pittsburgh Steelers and Cleveland and Cleveland Browns, who are tied for second place in the AFC North at seven and four. The Baltimore Ravens are six and four. Take a look at the AFC South. 
The Indianapolis Colts lead at, at seven and four, lead the Houston Texans five and six, the Tennessee Titans at two and nine, and the Jacksonville Jaguars one and ten. In the AFC West, the Broncos improved to eight, eight and three. The, the Kansas City Chiefs, with a rare loss, dropped to seven and four, and are tied with the San Diego Chargers, who have the same record. And the Oakland Raiders improved to one in ten, and avoid the 0-16 hole. Only the Lions were. You know, were unable to to avoid that hole in 2008. Back in, back to the NFC, the NFC East, the Philadelphia Eagles soar to an eight eight and three record. The Cowboys right now are seven and three. The New York Giants are three and seven. The Washington Redskins are three and eight. And the NFC North. Packers eight and three, Lions seven and four, Bears five and six, Vikings four and seven. The NFC South is the, the NFC South is awful. The Saints are the Saints lead the NFC South at four and six. That's a first right there. <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons are four and seven in second place. The Carolina Panthers are three and seven in third place, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are two and nine after suffering yet another loss to the Bears. And finally, the NFC West, the Arizona Cardinals, with a rare loss, dropped to nine and two. The Seattle Seahawks improved to seven and four, and so did the 49ers. The Rams fall to four and seven in last place in that division. I was, as I type down in, in my link to, to this broadcast, to this podcast episode 101, I was going to preview tomorrow night's matchup at Joe Louis Arena between the Red Wings and Ottawa Senators, but I don't have a link of it just yet. Let me, let me check and see. if they have a preview yet, DetroitRedWings.com. No, they do not. And neither does M and neither does MLive.com, so I just thought I'd fill it fill in the time with all NFL football, include including mostly our beloved Detroit Lions, who should lick lick and salt their wounds before tonight before going back to work tomorrow. So Having said all that, that, that concludes episode 101 of Taylor's Detroit Sports. Thanks for downloading and listening. I will be back uh, for episode 102. I think tomorrow I'll try to make it short because i got to get up early on Tuesday morning. Uh, but I will see you... Uh, I will talk to you guys in just over 10 minutes on Blog Talk Radio for Taylor's Detroit Sports Show. So uh, head over to blogtalkradio.com and until, uh, then until tomorrow. TTFN, ta-ta for now.